know something is wrong with your toes because they're not straight. <laughs> That's your first giveaway. And you want to straighten them because you have foot pain or because you just know that it's not right for them to be in all different directions. And now what do you do? Like if you just think about, you're trying to straighten your toe. <laughs> so that's what your fingers are gonna do. You're gonna mo start by mobilizing your toes and trying to teach them the right position to be in. Um, and this applies to hallux valgus, which is like when the toe, the big toe is inwards and then it starts to create a bunion out here. Um, hammer toes, mallet toes, and claw toes. Uh, it's really just like somewhere in the joint of the toe, it's bent. So it's either a really significant hammer toe is like up like this and then it, you know, you start to have overlap of toes. The, the mallet toe is when just the distal joint is bent down. So like your nail bed is actually pointing downwards instead of straight out like this. So here. And then a claw toe is when you have both of those, that, that distal and middle joint are both bent. So it's kind of like that. It's really good to be aware of it now, um, especially if you're young and just get a hold of those toes and try to get them straight and get into better footwear. So let's just look at how you would mobilize your toes. Okay, so here are my toes and you can see they look pretty straight to the naked eye, to the untrained eye. Um, but when I let them relax, that's them when I'm really splayed. When I let them relax, you can see I've got a little bit of curling here. These end toes, which is pretty common, but this is kind of like the problem right here because I curl in a little bit. It hides and it starts, you can see the nail bed starts to go downwards and that's from wearing traditional shoes my whole life, especially running in traditional shoes for many years. Let's start with the big toe. So you're gonna find the base of your, of your big toe, right? So here's the base of all of our toes is right through here. You can find that pretty prominent joint on your big toe. And you are just gonna press it up and down to start mobilizing it. And especially if you have a bunion, be careful here, but you can easily mobilize it. I mean, you got that toe in that position, you can get that toe out of that position as long as it's not completely fused. Okay, so you've gone up and down. Now you, want, you really need to grab your toes here. Don't be afraid to hold on to your toes and really push them and pull them. And so now I'm blocking here, I'm at the base of my big toe and I'm pushing my toe outwards. So this is like my metatarsal here and this is the joint, the MTP joint. I'm blocking there so that I can move it without moving my whole foot, right? That's what, that's what the purpose of like blocking and, and getting a full mobilization. So I'm pushing it into abduction because most toes are going this way. And even my toe has a tiny little angle that way. But just picture it inside of a shoe, it's definitely here. So you wanna do like maybe 20 of these. Now grab that big toe. I'm gonna be simultaneously balancing on this foam roller. We are going down and up. I am holding on to that MTP joint. And the reason is because if I do that, I'm getting my whole foot to move. And I don't want that. I want just my big toe. We wanna isolate the movement from just this joint. If you have a really significant hallux valgus, that angle in, inwards, you want to first pull it into a neutral position and then do your flexion and extension stretching. So we're mobilizing the base of the big joint, of the <laughs> big toe joint. So you can see from this angle, I'm pushing my toe upwards. If I was standing up, it'd be going up that way. Since my foot is upside down right now, looks like I'm pushing it downwards, right? But these joints get really prominent down here. We shouldn't feel them as much as we do. And that is again because of footwear, because the toes are used to being, especially in a running shoe, the, the bases of our toes end up dropping down here. And why? Because if you picture a typical running shoe, they all have that incline, that sweep upwards where the shoe company says that it's helping us to 
push ourselves off the ground when in actuality it's doing a lot of harm to our toes. And this little curly toe of mine is dropped the most. My, the base has dropped down and now it's pointed upwards and so it's gonna be reaching from an angle to get to the ground. So I'm just going through every single toe, the base of every toe, finding that joint, that prominent joint on the bottom and pushing it back upwards. And now we'll focus on this guy. Since that's my obvious one, I'm straightening it out. So you can see the difference between where it wants to be. It wants to just kind of curl up into a little ball and I'm pulling it straight and then I'm pulling it up and down. Better if you can get a hold of that joint and then do your up and down. Here's another way. Straighten out all the toes. Press them down into the ground and then mobilize from there. So I'm keeping pressure on, I'm not letting them curl up. And your toes are, are gonna fight you and they're gonna try to go if you have a lot of clawing in your toes. If you lost that mobility and strength. And same thing with the big toe. Get that toe splay going, right? Spread them out and then keep it locked down onto the ground. And you can hold on to the base of the big toe as you pump that foot up and down. So we're just reteaching the right angles, we're reteaching the joints and getting them ready to actually do an exercise and add some resistance and add some functionality to what we're doing. For now, this is all just toe mobility. Mm -hmm.